What's up, YouTube? Your boy back once again with us for a topic. And today we're going to talk some football, Houston, Texas football. Today we got a special guest, man. Who we got in the middle today? You got your boy Wise, Mr. Stingley's number one picks. Predict us. Yes, yes. Look at that Stingley jersey. Shout out to my brother uh, Spitz for having me on today. All right, all right, man. Appreciate you having me on, man. Like I know before, I, I've been telling you before, you liking the content, make sure you're liking the channel, make sure you're subscribing to the channel, make sure you comment on the video, sharing all the videos, all social media platforms, man. Let's get this thing growing and growing and growing. Now, I want to talk about something, man, because a lot of things have been circling, a lot of rumors have been circling. It seems like, as of today, that they finally have finally pulled the trigger and pulled Davis Mills and, um, in replace of uh, Kyle Allen, even though both – Lovey and Nick Asirio had interviews today, and both of them were very non-committal, very dismissive of the whole situation. I want to ask you, do you think it's time for uh, Lovey to be a one-and-done coach? You know, I've been feeling that way since training camp, to be honest. Um, the reason why I felt that way is because he was giving me those same Tampa Bay Lovey Smith vibes, if you get what I mean. When he took a number one co corner in Vernon Hargraves, uh, he ruined his career by playing him in zone. Uh, he's stuck in his ways. He doesn't want to innovate his defense, even though we've seen guys like Ron, Ron Rivera take his de defense and explore different options with it, go more into a 4-3, run more of a multi-defense, and actually play to his guy's strength. Shoot, they just beat us this week. <laughs> so, um, and then, I mean... He, he's just been terrible, man. He doesn't want to make any chances. He don't want to take any risks. When it came down to the quarterback situation, I want to uh, shoot out to my boy um, Brian T. Smith with the Chronicle because he had to grill him after this game, and he was like, last week we asked you why you didn't make any changes. This week you're coming off a bad loss to the commanders, and you're still not making any changes. What's going on? We didn't hear Brandon Cooks make his uh, voice his frustrations, talking about his stuff happening behind closed doors after we got rid of Jack used to be that he needed to come out and say it. And he was talking about tweet. He was putting tweets out there talking about wasting his career and things of that sorts. Um, and this this is just really concerning that you you're trying to stick to one guy throughout the whole season. Uh, this guy is regressing uh, the talent around him. We're not even seeing what Nico Collins can do or the player he can be because you're only running uh, sideline routes for him. You're not running no deep routes, deep post routes, no slants underneath. You ain't getting these guys open. Davis Mill can't get the ball to him. He can't throw the ball deep. But you got a veteran in Kyle Allen who's been – a better quarterback um, in the NFL than Davis Mims and has proven that he can win at least not. He's not the best quarterback, but you know what I mean? He can get you a tank job at the, at the same time, but it's going to look better. You're going to see what your players can do. You're going to see he did the same thing with DJ Moore in Carolina. So it's not really making a big change. We're just trying to see what this team can be, how we can build upon it, because we know with the number one pick, we're going to have to take a quarterback. And if you get in the uh, quarterback, then I think you really need to focus on pairing that quarterback up with a uh, new coach. Uh, so, and we could talk about that coach later, but um, you definitely got to pair a rookie quarterback with a rookie coach uh, and let them grow together and go through those frustrations and build together. Um, and we can see this franchise try to turn it around, but Lovey Smith, I'm getting tired of hearing his interviews every week. He's very, very dismissive. He wants it his way at a highway. Uh, he wants to stay in 1990 mindset, 1980 mindset. It ain't the 1990, it ain't the early 2000s. It's 2020, Lovey Smith. Things have changed in the NFL. We want to see our corners playing man coverage. We want to see guys being able to bring blitz on the defensive side of the ball. And we wanted to see a better quarterback this whole season. You didn't do a better job than uh, Cully, uh, uh, David Cully. And guys was getting on David Cully bad. But to be honest, Bill O'Brien wasn't even a bad coach. If you look at Lovey Smith, Lovey Smith is so disrespectful. It's disrespectful to even compare Lovey Smith with a Bill O'Brien's. Like it really is, and it's it's absurd. He needs to. It, it has to be a change. He's got to be a one and done. And I don't care what people say. Uh, when it comes to race, you need a black co uh, head coach. This you need a black head coach that because I would take a Byron Leftwich. I would have took an Eric Bieniemy last year, even though 
Everybody said he's not one of the best coach, but I want to took I would have took a chance on one of those guys other than uh, Lovey Smith because at least we would have seen what this offense could have did with a young rookie quarterback if you really wanted to see what you had in Davis Mills at the end of the day. So, um, at the end of the day, short. Sure, I mean, but my long answer, he is not the answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you you good man? See this 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 what it is with me. And like I said, I, like I said, Lovey was never in my realm of like coach I want to hire. But when they hired him, like okay, cool. We didn't got away from the David Cudley. Um, um, no, you knew it was kind of an embarrassment. Okay, now we got an actual guy who can is you can see being the head coach. Probably the biggest crime that, that Lovey Smith has done is something you just mentioned. It's disrespectful to even refer to even refer him in the same tone as you do Bill O'Brien. I think the biggest crime to the city that, that Lovey's done is that he's a worse head coach than Bill O'Brien. Like it's disrespectful to Bill O'Brien to consider him and Bill O'Brien in the same playing field. And that's the problem. That's probably the worst thing that he's done. And who would thought you would ever say that? This is the thing. Lovey Smith has to be a one and done head coach because he has no power, no control. There's no reason for him to be here because if uh, Davis Mills getting pulled, it's not Lovey Smith's decision. It is Nick Casario's decision. It might be Cal's decision. It might be Hannah's decision. It might be it might be uh, 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 Mrs. Minnie. It's it's somebody's decision outside Lovey Smith. And there lies the problem. No matter how you feel about Davis, no matter how you feel about uh, about Bill O'Brien, anytime Bill O'Brien has made a quarterback change from Ron Mallet, from from uh, from Ron, uh, Ron Fitzpatrick to Ron Mallet, from Ron Mallet to Brian Hoyer, from Brian Hoyer back to Ron Mallet, from uh, Tom Sa- from uh, uh, um, um, Oswald to Tom Savage, from Tom Savage to Deshaun Watson, and therefore it's always been. Bill O'Brien's decision. Bill O'Brien was always the one in control. He was always the one that made that decision no matter when he made that decision. Same thing with Gary Kubiak. That's part of the reason why Gary Kubiak got fired because he kept playing yo-yo between uh, um, um, Matt Schaub and Case Keenum back in 2013 after they lost to Jacksonville on Thursday night. And that's the reason why he got fired in the middle of the season. If this is not Lovey Smith's decision. So what is the point of having Lovey Smith? Because if I'm a manager... I should be able to hire and fire my staff, and I should be able to make. Sh- I should be able to uh, dictate the schedule: who comes in, who don't come in, what time they come in, the shifts or whatever. If I'm supposed to be the manager, so the manager, he's the head coach. He's supposed to be the head coach of the uh, of the football team. Basically, the manager of the football team. He should be able to hire and fire his coaching staff, and he should, he should be able to decide who plays and who not to play. And if he doesn't have any of those decisions, what's the purpose of having them? He's just here, just to be here. And he, after he gets all irritated, like I said, shout, shout out to Brian T. Smith, because he gets out here irritated. He acts like Bill O'Brien, but at least Bill O'Brien has the credentials, the, the back-to-back AFC t- t- titles. Whatever that means, we can say division titles don't mean nothing. You have won one game. You've had 10 opportunities. You've won one game. You've won one game, and even after winning that one game, since the second game of the season, you have only ran 27 plays of offense with having a lead. That's three and out every single game for the last nine games. There's no – you have nothing to talk about. You have no reason to be irritated talking about they haven't been booing us all year. Yes, they have. We've booed you every single game. Now maybe they ain't booed you the first three quarters of the Coast game, but I'm pretty sure from that second, from the from that fourth quarter in overtime, you were being booed. You know, the away games, yeah, you can't hear us that you're being booed, but we're booing you at home and all your games at NRG. We're definitely booing you at NRG. Like, 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 no, like, oh, they, they haven't built. No, it's a flat out lie. And it's up here, oh, I'm not going to make any changes. I'm not going to tell y'all. I'm not going to give the Dolphins an advantage. Stop that. Stop, stop that bull. It's just straight bull. That, that, that's completely utter bull. I mean, you really think the Dolphins are going to have an advantage if they know we have Davis Mills versus, uh, uh, um, Kyle Allen, they're not going to have an advantage. They're going to have an advantage. No, they are going to have an advantage because they have better players. They're a better coach team. They're a better ranked organization. 
that's the advantage. Not knowing if Davis Mills playing, not versus Kyle playing. That's not that. Like, it's just stupid. It's just stupid, utterly ridiculous. And I, I can't stand it. It's very, very irritating. The whole thing that he does, the whole spirit that he does, the attitude that he has, like he won some championships. It's been almost 20 years ago since he went to the Super Bowl in Chicago. So he hasn't done anything. There's, there's nothing he's done. He has not. He's not done nothing at all for him to be sitting up here acting the way he acts. And your, your offense looks the way it does. Does what you have no control over, I guess, because you're a defensive my coach. Let's look at your defense. Stingley, I got the Stingley jersey on. You're mismanaging Stingley. I mean, don't get me wrong, y'all know I was a sauce guy going into uh going into the draft, and I think sauce is a good player, but Stingley's doing is getting a vow uh, um disservice done to him by the much zone that you run. And I this game, I'm glad Stingley probably ain't gonna play because I don't want I don't want nothing uh uh Outside, I don't want the defensive scheme to make Stingley look even worse because they keep giving Tyreek Hill and Waddle those cushions in zone. You know how the type of yards they about to rack up in this game. You understand the the, the type of damage they're gonna do to this defense running their zone. So, but I know we talked about potential uh, coaching hires and replacing De- uh, um um Lovey Smith. Who do you think we should replace Lovey Smith with? It's two guys that I really want. The first guy is gonna be well, really three guys. But I'll just talk about two. The first guy's going to be Ken Dorsey. We, I know we both talked about Ken Dorsey. He's just the perfect fit for us. He's a, He didn't play with uh, Andre Johnson, won a champion with him in college, one of the greatest college football teams of all time. Uh, he led that team and went to a championship. Um, he went into the NFL. He played for the 49ers. He wasn't the best quarterback. He was a backup quarterback. Uh, he did get his opportunity to start. Obviously, he didn't get his op- opportunity to be a long-term starter. Then he went to Cleveland. He was a backup there as well. Anyways, this guy transitions into a quarterback's coach for Cam Newton. During those years, Cam Newton had the best years of his career. Then he transitions to Buffalo, and he is the quarterback coach for Josh Allen uh, when he had his actual, uh, his good year, in the first good year in the NFL. So, and he's been at Buffalo since then. He became the uh, passing coordinator, and I believe he's the offensive coordinator now. So, and they have the top three, top five offense. I, I believe it was number one at one point uh, in the NFL. So, this guy has a lot of talent. He knows how to lead an uh, offense. He knows how to scheme up some plays. He's worked with mobile quarterbacks, like I said, Josh Allen, uh, like I said, um, Cam Newton. Even though Bryce Young is smaller than both of those guys, he throws the ball. He's very accurate. And if you pair a Bryce Young or even a C.J. Stroud, at the very least, um, with Ken Dorsey, it would be a nightmare for teams. I finally would think we're going in the right direction. And we've seen what De- uh, Dable, De- Brian DeBall, he went to the Giants. He was able to turn them around. So this Buffalo co- coaching tree is starting to prove some things in the NFL. And I would like us to take a chance on a guy like Ken Dorsey. Like I said, he's already have a relationship with Andre Johnson. You know Andre Johnson's going to be back in the front office. Uh, he's going to have influence on his team, how we build his team going forward. Now that, it, now that we got rid of Jack used to be. So Ken Dorsey... With a with the number one pick, with a quarterback option, will be a great option for me. He's young. He's only 40, I believe. So 40 years old, taking a 20, 21-year-old quarterback. Them guys can be together for 20 years <laughs> if everything goes well and the Texans get to the Super Bowl. So um, another option for me is D'Amico Ryan. You know, I've been talking about D'Amico Ryan since last year. Even before last year, I wanted D'Amico Ryan because – the thing about the Miko Ryans is he was a great Texan. He was a great Houston Texans. At his time here, he was leading the defense. That's when we had one of the best defense of franchise history. Um, he was a leader on his team. He was a vocal leader on this team. He had guys looking right. He was able to uh, coach up a young Brian Cushing. He was able to coach up a young uh, J.J. Watts. Uh, he was having guys like Antonio Smith that came in and like in free agency and getting them guys looking right. He was able to stop the run. He was hitting, laying guys out and things of that sort. And then he gets the opportunity to coach in the NFL once he retires. And and he did also go to the Philadelphia Eagle, Eagles and had a good uh, career too while he was there. But once he got his opportunity to coach, he was a linebackers coach, sort of sort of like Mike Vrabel with the Houston Texans. 
uh, ex player, go to a different team. You know what I mean? And he did a great job with the linebackers. He did a great job with Fred Warner. He did a great job with Bowman. He did a great job with uh, uh, Green. Ah, what's his first name, though? I can't think of his first name, but his last name is Green, uh, the linebacker, or Green Law. Green Law. Uh, he did a great job with that front seven in general with the 49ers. And we've seen Fred Warner is the best linebacker in the game right now. <laughs> and D'Amico Ryans, when he was in the league, he was one of the best linebackers, one of the best middle linebackers in the game. So he's been able to coach up a guy like that that wasn't even a first-round player. And he was able to get this guy to be able to lead one of the best defenses in the league. And once Robert Salah left, he was able to transition to that defensive coordinator role last year, and they still had a top three defense. Um, and then this year they still have a top five defense. And they they do have the talent, but they let go they let go of talent every year. They got to re-up with players. They got guys leaving in free agency. Uh, and... They just let go of DeForest Bunkner a couple years ago and traded him to the uh, traded him to the Colts, and these guys are still able to compete at a high level. And we're talking about DeForest Buckner, one of the best D tackles in the game right now. So, D'Amico Ryan will be able to come in here, command the players, the respect of the players, something like Mike Vrabel is doing with the Tennessee Titans right now. Uh, he's going to have them buy in. I know he's going to bring in an offensive coordinator because he can't call the plays on the offensive side of the ball. So he won't just go get a Pep Hamilton or somebody like that that's never did anything. He's going to go get somebody from the 49ers coaching tree, the Kubiak coaching tree or something like that. Um, and then he's going to get the right staff around him. He's going to call up a Jonathan Joseph. Hey, <laughs> Stingley Jr. has got the 24. You got the 24. We need you as the cornerback's coach. <laughs> we need you as the cornerback's coach. So this is why I prefer these two guys. They both was players. They both got the experience as players. They both got the experience as assistant coaches. And now they both are coordinators, and they're showing that they can do it no matter who leaves the organization for both teams. So that's why I think both of those guys are the best options at the coaching position for the Houston Texans. I'm a hundred percent agree with, uh, with with Ken Dorsey. Uh, like when I did my video, I, I had Ken Dorsey as number one. I had uh, I had D'Amico on my list. Um, B wasn't too. He, he had to, I had D'Amico at four. Um, D'Amico, uh, former Houston Texan, uh, was a good was a, was a great player. Was rookie of the year a uh, couple time Pro Bowl, a couple time All Pro. Uh, like I said, so with the organization, and especially if you're the number one pick, and you do lean towards drafting somebody like Bryce Young, who went to Alabama. So did uh, D'Amico. So I'm pretty sure D'Amico knows Bryce very well. He knows Nick and their and their program very well. So he knows all the ins and outs about Bryce, and that's something very comfortable. Not to mention, you got two picks possibly in the top five. What if Willie Anderson falls to you? So D'Amico gets to coach another Bama guy. Y'all already got Christian Harris. Don't you think him him coaching Christian Harris would uh, would do wonders for Christian Harris again? More role tie guys. It's, it's it's a very long. It's a very it's a very short line. He played with the organization as a Texan. Was a good player. One rookie, defensive rookie of the year, and then he knows these guys off program because of the whole Alabama tie. And I think he'll do wonders for them. The problem with that is, and I agree, the whole getting the guy on the Kubiak staff. I I, I the whole I, I get that the whole Kubiak Shanahan staff. They doing wonders in the NFL right now because almost every coach. Almost every good offensive coach or coach period is coaching right now either at one point coached in Houston or had direct ties to Houston. Robert Salah was on the Houston staff with Kubiak. Uh, uh, Mike McDaniels on the Houston staff uh, was on the Houston staff with, uh, with Kubiak. Obviously, Kyle Shanahan was the offensive coordinator uh, under Kubiak. Um, Matt LaFleur, coach of the, uh, Green Bay, coached in Houston uh, under Kubiak. Um, uh, um, What's his name uh, uh, for the Rams? Uh, uh, Sean McVay never coached Houston, but he comes from that Kubiak. It comes from that Kubiak tree. Same thing with O'Connell comes from the Kubiak tree. Same thing with uh, um, I mean, come from the Shanahan tree. I'm sorry, which directly comes from Houston as well, and also uh, um, the coach of Cincinnati. I think he comes from that uh, comes from that tree as well. So these guys either either at one point coached in Houston or have ties to somebody that coached Houston. So it has it has a lot of the the, the tree runs thick. When it comes that way, but my only gripe, my only gripe, my only thing that that knocks against him is that he's a defensive minded guy. You talking about drafting somebody as a quarterback number one overall? That's why I definitely lean towards Ken Dorsey. The Andre compared the Andre uh, thing I, that 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 does a lot as well. 
Um, and also him being around offensive minded guys, him being around Cam Newton, he won the MVP, and Josh Allen, the way he's playing at for the past couple of years. But y'all know my number two has been the same number two I've been saying for years, and that's Byron Leverage. I've been saying that for years. Uh, and I'm, I'm not moving on the stance. My only thing about Brian Leftwich, if you if you hire Brian Leftwich, you're probably going to lean more towards CJ than you are Bryce, in my personal opinion. But um, all that being said, you you definitely got to move on from Lovey Smith. You made the decision to move on from Mills, finish the process, and move on from um, from Lovey. There's no reason, no purpose to keep Lovey. I don't want to hear this. Oh, he a one and done. You never had another one and done. You got rid of three black coaches in three consecutive years. One, one Romeo don't count because he he was an intern, uh, intern. So no, 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 he doesn't count. You didn't hire Romeo off the streets. Romeo was in the boat building. You just moved him up because you fired Bill O'Brien. That don't count. And Cully and Lovey Smith. This is coming from a black man. It's coming from two black men. We don't give a damn that they fired Lovey Smith after one year. He a black coach. I don't care. I don't care. Get somebody who can do the damn job. Like get somebody to do the job. I don't care. Oh no, no. Forget all that. Forget all that. Pro- oh, forget all that. That don't make no sense. I'm trying to win football games. I'm trying to develop my team. I can care less if he white, green, black, green, or purple. I don't give a damn. Can he coach? Is he the right guy for the job? Is he the right fit for the job? People too are too focused on dynamics and ethnic groups. I don't care about that. I don't care about that. This, I don't care about that right now. I'm trying to win football games. And right now, he ain't the guy. He ain't the guy, B. He not. He not, he not it. He ain't, he ain't it. He ain't him. He ain't him. Him or Davis Mills. Neither one. They ain't him. They ain't them. So get rid of them. That's what you need to do. That's the them that you need to do. Them. Get rid of them. Because they not them. Uh, anything you want to say before we get out, man? Nah. Uh, Lovey Smith got to go. And I, <laughs> trust me. If it wasn't Spitz Page, I would say some bad things. <laughs> some very, very bad things about Lovey Smith. Uh, but I chose not to make those words and statements today. But uh, join the Discord if you really want to hear how wise feel on a daily basis. Uh, salute to my brother Spitz for having me on his channel as a guest. <laughs> hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Uh, and hit the comments. I mean, we, we, we love the haters. Uh, we love the supporters even more because they support everything that we're right. all talking about. They showing support. They showing love. They hitting the like button. They commenting and giving us their thoughts. You don't have to hate what we're saying, but everything that we've been saying for the last three to four or five years has came to fruition in this Houston Texans franchise. And it's crazy how accurate we've been, bro. I, I don't really think people realize everything that we've been saying for years and years and years actually has been happening, but. Hey, we maybe we're wrong. Maybe we don't know what we're talking about. But salute to everybody and salute to my brother Spitz. Yeah, because if I'm not mistaken, I did think that we said the video that me, you, and a uh, uh, wink did for the season preview. I think we all said. I think we we said it would happen a little bit earlier though. But we did say by the time the Cleveland Brown game would show up, that Kyle Allen would be the quarterback. I think we said that. Yeah, we did say that. <laughs> <laughs> Huh. It's just funny how things like that happen. Oh, anyway, well, uh, like, subscribe. If you haven't comment below, if you haven't clicked that bell, get more videos. I holla. <laughs>